Dear friends, we are back with a new video on the topic lung volume and capacity. This is the series on the respiratory system. I hope you have watched the previous videos. To begin with, then lung volumes and capacities. Now, what are we going to learn in this today's video? That is our specific learning objectives. At the end, we should be able to define and give the normal values of various lung volumes and capacities that is static and dynamic how to measure the lung function test with their clinical significance what is work of breathing and differentiation between obstructive and restrictive pulmonary diseases now to start with pulmonary function test or lung function test are useful in assessing the functional status of the respiratory system both physiologically and pathologically. Now these lung function tests are based on the measurements of volume of air which is taken in and out during quiet respiration as well as during forceful breathing that is when you are forcefully breathing in and exhaling out. And these tests are carried out mostly by using a device called as spirometer to which we will be coming at the end of our video. Now these are the following conditions where or the uh, volume and capacities which can be measured by spirometry. So the first one except the residual volume. So the first volume uh, first we proceed with static lung volume, tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume and residual volume. So there are four volumes in static lung volumes. Now we will see each one of them. The first one being tidal volume or it is also termed as TV. So the tidal volume is the volume of air that is breathed in and out during quiet respiration. But routinely respiration that is called as tidal volume in the resting condition. So it is approximately 500 ml. But 500 ml of air you are taking in and out. Second is inspiratory reserve volume. Now this is the air that can be breathed in by maximum inspiratory efforts after normal respiration. Matlab abhi aap normal respiration kar rahe ho aur isme aap ne ek bhoot lambi saas li. So this is called as inspiratory reserve volume. That is the air that can be breathed in by maximum inspiratory effort. So it comes to approximately 2 to 3.3 liters. And normally we take approximately 500 ml. But in inspiratory reserve volume, we take about 2 to 3.3 liters. So this pink graph, this is the normal graph. This represents our tidal volume. After normal inspiration and expiration, the amount of breath that can be inspired is called as inspiratory reserve volume. But itna air hamne extra in under liye. So that is 2 to 3.3 liter. Can you see this? This is the inspiratory reserve volume. We come up to the third one. The air that can be breathed out by maximum expiratory effort after an ordinary expiration. But after you uh, <coughs> when you're breathing normally. Okay, then you take an inspiration, normal inspiration, then you exhale out maximum with maximum capacity. So that is called as expiratory reserve volume and that comes to approximately 1 liter. Now say for example, you have a normal inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expiration, inspiration hua normal and you have forceful expiration. Kiya. So, you expiratory reserve volume would be your this cycle. Okay. So, this is called as expiratory reserve volume. <coughs> we come to the fourth one. Fourth, that is static lung volume, residual volume. This is the amount of air which remains in the lung after maximum expiration. That is when you expire very long expiration or when you maximum expire so uske baad bhi jo lung mein air reh jata hai it is called as reserve volume can you see this reserve volume so this is the amount of air which is actually present in the lung it is called as reserve volume rv now 
this air when you have if you want to remove you have to expel it from the lung by opening the chest and allowing the lung to permanently collapse and that comes to approximately 1.2 liter so the normal tidal volume is 500 ml maximum air which can you breathe in after normal respiration is 2 to 3.3 liter maximum air which you can breathe out after ordinary expiration is 1 liter and the amount of air which still remain in the lung after maximum expiration is called as reserve volume and it is approximately 1.2 liter so these all four were the static lung volume and static lung volume now we see what is static lung capacities now when more than two lung volume combine it forms a capacity मतलब अगर टाइडल वॉल्यूम और इंस्पिरेटरी वॉल्यूम कंबाइन होंगे तो वह एक कैपेसिटी बनाएंगे ऐसे सिमिलरली दो लंग वॉल्यूम कंबाइन होंगे तो वह एक कैपेसिटी बनाएंगे सो देर आर फाइव स्टैटिक लंग कैपेसिटीज फर्स्ट इज इंस्पिरेटरी सेकंड एक्सपिरेटरी थर्ड वाइटल कैपेसिटी फोर्थ फंक्शनल रेसिडियल कैपेसिटी एंड द लास्ट इज टोटल लंग कैपेसिटी इट इज कॉल्ड एज टी we proceed with inspiratory capacity the maximum volume of air that can be inspired from the end expiratory position is called as inspiratory capacity matlab jo jitna air hum le sakte andar after expiration is called as inspiratory capacity so isme kya hoga humne andar air liya tidal volume plus maximum air humne jo liya that is inspiratory reserve volume so your two volumes are been combined tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume so it comes approximately 3.5 liter expiratory capacity the maximum volume of air that can be expired from the end inspiratory position is expiratory capacity matlab humne jo air expire kiya after the end expiratory inspiratory position जब इंस्पायर करने के बाद आपने जो मैक्सिमम वॉल्यूम ऑफ एयर एक्सपायर किया दैट इज कॉल्ड एज एक्सपिरेटरी कैपेसिटी सो इट इंक्लूड टाइडल वॉल्यूम प्लस एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम दिस एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम वॉज वन लीटर प्लस फाइव हंड्रेड एम एल ऑफ टाइडल वॉल्यूम सो वन पॉइंट फाइव लीटर्स थर्ड वाइटल कैपेसिटी नाउ दिस इज द यूजल क्वेश्चन विच इज आस्क इन योर एग्जाम्स वाइटल कैपेसिटी सो इट इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ एयर दैट कैन बी ब्रीद आउट बाय मैक्सिमम एक्सपिरेटरी एफर्ट आफ्टर मैक्सिमम इंस्पिरेशन मतलब आपने एक डीप इंस्पिरेशन लिया मैक्सिमम इंस्पिरेशन उसके बाद आपने जो मैक्सिमली एफर्ट लेके एक्सेल किया दैट इज कॉल्ड एज वाइटल कैपेसिटी सो इसमें क्या क्या आएगा इंस्पिरेटरी कैपेसिटी प्लस एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम so your inspiratory capacity was 3.5 liter you can see here this is your inspiratory capacity plus this 1 liter of expiratory reserve volume so it comes approximately 4.5 liters now normally this vital capacity is in the range between 3 to 5 liters okay what we got 4.5 it can be that that is an average but you get in the minimum range of 3 to 5 liter now this also depends on age sex of the patient what is the size of the individual is he very much healthy lean thin and it also depends upon the racial variations so this is the vital capacity you can see here in the arrow representing in the orange <coughs> after maximum inspiration what you are exhaling deep exhalation is called as vital capacity now the cause of variation in this vital capacity now vital capacity diminishes with age so and is always lower by more than 10% in old people jaise jaise aapka age badhega aapka vital capacity but obvious reduce hoga aur jo athletes hote hain unme ye vital capacity zyada hota hai 30 to 40% as compared to the subject who are living sedentary disposition lifestyle vital capacity is less in supine position when you are lying down then in the standing position because of intra thoracic blood volume diminishes in standing posture and the diaphragm can move downward more easily rather than the 
supine position. Also, vital capacity diminishes in condition which are associated with weakness of the muscles of respiration. So, this will be a little bit cage restricted. So, it will not be inflated because of which the vital capacity also diminishes. Now, we come towards the fourth vital capacity, uh, fourth static lung volume and capacity that is functional residual capacity. So, this is the volume of air remaining in the lung after quiet expiration. Matlab, normal expiration ke baad bhi jo lung mein air bacha rehta hai, usse hum bolte hai functional residual capacity. So, it contains residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume and it comes to approximately 2.2 liters. The last one is total lung volume. Sorry, total lung capacity. The volume of air that the lung can hold after a maximum possible inspiration is the total lung capacity that is kitna zada aapka lung air hold kar sakta hai inspiration mein that is called as total lung capacity so that contains inspiratory reserve volume plus fractional resid functional residual capacity so it comes to approximately 6 liters so this is the total lung capacity this is your total lung capacity now we come to the dynamic lung volumes pehle humne static dekha abhi hum dynamic dekhenge ab dynamic mein kya ho gaya na yahan pe ek quantification aaya matlab ek qualify karne ke liye cheez aaya jisme hum time range laga denge isme humne time range nahi lagaya tha yahan pe ek condition laga di hai time ki iske liye dynamic process hai so dynamic lung volume quantifies time rate of gas flow along the respiratory tree. This helps us to evaluate dyspnea and pulmonary insufficiencies. So it includes four types. First is forced vital capacity. Second is maximum voluntary ventilation MVV. Third is maximal mid expiratory flow rate. And the last is peak expiratory flow rate. Now, these are little bit difficult to understand. So, I want you to please uh, listen this very carefully. First, we'll see forced vital capacity. This is the volume of air that can be forcibly exhaled out after full inspiration. It is expressed in liters. So, it is the volume of air that can be forcibly exhaled out after full inspiration. Now, Thus, this total vital capacity or forced vital capacity or timed vital capacity is exactly similar to vital capacity except that there is a special stress on rapid, forcible and complete exhalation. So, we have three categories or three conditions in which we can vital capacity or forced vital capacity. Ko differentiate karte. Now this includes three components FEV1, FEV2, FEV3. Forced expiratory volume in one second. Similarly, FEV2 means volume in two seconds. And FEV3 means forced expiratory volume in three seconds. But the pele first second map kitna volume of air expire karteho. Second second may kitna karteho or third second may kitna karteho. So in the first second, forcibly when you exhale, so you exhale 80%. In the second second, you exhale 95%. And in the third, you exhale normally 98 to 100% of the forced vital capacity. <coughs> forced vital capacity is the volume of air that you can forcibly exhale out after full inspiration. Second is maximum voluntary ventilation. That is how to which extent or to what great extent can you voluntarily ventilate yourself. So maximum volume of air that can be moved into and out of the lung in one minute by maximum voluntary effort. But you do forceful breathing in one minute, tak karo ge, so you can move volume of air in or out. Kar sakte. That is maximum voluntary ventilation. It decreases in emphysema and asthma. 
third is maximum mid expiratory flow rate the average rate of air flow during the middle half of expired volume of forced expiratory spirogram is mid sorry maximum mid expiratory flow rate this helps to assess small airway function fourth one is peak expiratory flow rate now this is the maximum flow speed of air which is achieved during maximum forced expiration initiated at full inspiration matlab aapne pura inspiration liya aur uske baad forcefully maximumly aapne expiration kiya to jo speed se flow hoga na that would be your peak expiratory flow rate now this is measured with the help of a peak flow meter okay the normal expected value depends on gender age and height of an individual it is decreased in obstructive lung disorder such as asthma and copd because here you cannot forcefully exhale or inhale the air it would create uh, discomfort <coughs> now we see how to measure the lung volume and capacity so spirometry is the method to measure lung volume and capacity simple instrument used for this purpose is called as spirometer ye jo method hai usko metri bolte hain aur jo instrument use karte hain usko spirometer bolte hain ye spirometer modified hua ek next level pe so is form respirometer bolte hain now what happens is spirometer is made up of a metal and it contains two chamber namely आउटर चेंबर एंड इनर चेंबर आउटर चेंबर में क्या होता है वाटर फील्ड होता है और ऊपर से इन्वर्टेड ड्रम रखा जाता है कैन यू सी दिस इन दाइग्राम दिस इज दी आउटर वाटर चेंबर एंड उसमें हमने ये इन्वर्टेड ड्रम रख दिया दिस इज द इन्वर्टेड ड्रम एंड दिस इज द आउटर चेंबर वॉट हैपन्स इज द ड्रम इज काउंटर बैलेंस्ड बाय अ वेट इसमें क्या हो जाता है इसके बाद इसको वेट से विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ पुली इट इज बीन केप्ड ऑन अ वेट एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस वॉट हैपन्स इज अ पेन विद इंक इज अटैच टू द काउंटर वेट पेन इज मेड टू राइट ऑन अ कैलिब्रेटेड पेपर विद अ फिक्स रिकॉर्डिंग डिवाइस तो ये सिलेंडर में जिसको हम बोलते हैं रिकॉर्डिंग ड्रम यहाँ पे हम एक पेन रख देते हैं तो जैसे आप इंस्पिरेशन एक्सपिरेशन करोगे ये पेन से वो ड्रम पे रिकॉर्डिंग होगा ओके और रबर ट्यूब इज कनेक्टेड टू दिस सब्जेक्ट एट द आउटर सब्जेक्ट टू द आउटर एंड ऑफ द मिडल ट्यूब मेटल ट्यूब एट द आउटर एंड ऑफ दिस रबर ट्यूब अ माउथ पीस इज अटैच सो यर वॉट हैपन इज जो पेशेंट होगा उसको हम यहाँ पे एक रबर ट्यूब रबर से जो एक पट्टा होता है वो पट्टा बांध देंगे और उसका जो आउटर चेंबर का जो ओपनिंग है उसको इस माउथ पीस को अटैच करेंगे और ये माउथ पीस पेशेंट के माउथ में होगा ठीक है नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस इज यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड टू थिंग्स द सब्जेक्ट रेस्पायर्स थ्रू दिस माउथ पीस बाय क्लोजिंग द नोज विद अ नोज क्लिप नाक से सांस नहीं लेना है मुँह से सांस लेना है और स्पायरोमेट्री इज यूज ओनली फॉर अ सिंगल ब्रेथ नॉट फॉर द रिपीटेड साइकिल बिकॉज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एक्यूमुलेट हो जाता है स्पायरोमीटर में और फ्रेश ऑक्सीजन पेशेंट को नहीं मिल पाता है इसके लिए सिर्फ एक ही साइकिल ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन एंड एक्सपिरेशन कैन टेक प्लेस वट हैपन्स इज स्पायरोग्राम इज द ग्राफिकल रिकॉर्ड ऑफ लंग वॉल्यूम एंड कैपेसिटीज यूजिंग स्पायरोमीटर अपवर्ड डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द स्पायरोग्राम डिनोट्स इंस्पिरेशन एंड डाउनवर्ड कर्व इंडिकेट एक्सपिरेशन रेस्पायरोमीटर इज द मॉडिफाइड फॉर्म ऑफ स्पायरोमीटर इट हैज प्रोविजन फॉर रिमूवल ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड इट वेयर सप्लाई ऑफ ऑक्सीजन ऑल्सो कैन बी डन थर्ड वन इज कंप्यूटराइज स्पायरोमीटर वेयर वॉट हैपन्स इज कंप्यूटर को अपन एक ट्रांसड्यूसर अटैच करते हैं दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द ट्रांसड्यूसर इट डज नॉट कंटेन अ रबर और अ वाटर चेंबर द सब्जेक्ट हैज टू बी रेस्पायर थ्रू दिस सोफेस्टिकेटेड ट्रांसड्यूसर विच इज कनेक्टेड टू द इंस्ट्रूमेंट बाई मीन्स ऑफ अ केबल तो आप जहाँ से यहाँ पे इंस्पिरेशन एक्सप्रेशन करोगे आपको कंप्यूटर स्क्रीन पे ग्राफिकल रिकॉर्ड्स आ जाएगा अलॉन्ग विथ ऑल द रीडिंग्स देर इज अनदर प्लेथेजमोग्राफ इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड इट इज अ टेक्निक used to measure all the lung volume and capacity in spirometer you cannot measure residual volume baki in plethysmography you can measure all the lung volumes 
what is the limitation of this test now here what happens is your result depends on the patient's efforts so it is dependent on patient cooperation and effort as a result the patient you have to uh, you have to tell the patient all the instruction otherwise readings galat aayegi कोई कोई पेशेंट अनकॉपरेटिव होते हैं सेमी कॉन्शियस होते हैं अनकॉन्शियस होते हैं तो आप उन पर यह नहीं कर सकते ओके okay? और जो सेडेटेड होंगे उनके ऊपर आप ये टेस्ट नहीं कर सकते बाई यूजिंग सिंपल स्पायरोमीटर रेस्पायरोमीटर और कंप्यूटराइज स्पायरोमीटर नॉट ऑल लंग वॉल्यूम्स एंड कैपेसिटीज कैन बी मेजर्ड नाउ वाई डू वी डू दिस पलमनरी फंक्शन टेस्ट वी डू दिस पलमनरी फंक्शन टेस्ट टू हेल्प अस इन डायग्नोसिस ऑफ वेरियस फंक्शनल एबनॉर्मेलिटीज in ascertaining whether the disease is obstructive or restrictive type to identify the probable cause of respiratory signs and symptoms and screening of unsuspected respiratory elements very effective to verify the effectiveness of the bronchodilator treatment which we are going to undertake it <coughs> now we come to the applied aspect that is obstructive and restrictive lung diseases विल डिफ्रेंशिएट साइमल्टेनियसली बोथ ऑफ दैम ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव मीन्स जहाँ पे कुछ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन हुआ होगा जिस वजह से ये अकरेंस हो रहे हैं सो ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीज आर ड्यू टू एयर वे ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन एंड देर इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड एक्सपीरेशन इन दिस रिस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजीज इट इज ड्यू टू रिस्ट्रिक्टेड लंग एक्सपांशन एंड देर इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड इंस्पिरेशन एज वेल एज एक्सपीरेशन बोथ द कॉमन कॉज फॉर ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव डिजीजेस आर ब्रॉन्केल अस्तमा सीओ पी डी क्रॉनिक ब्रॉन्काइटिस एंड एम्फाइसिमा here what happens is it is due to interstitial lung disease there can be fibrosis of the lung jiske wajah se restrictive inspiration expiration hai malformation of the thorax may be kyphosis scoliosis or if there is fracture so you cannot take full inspiration when you take full inspiration wo nerves wahan pe ye honge aur fir wo aapko full inspiration karne nahi denge jiske wajah se aap restrict ho jaoge saans lene ke liye so these are the conditions for restrictive lung diseases next we differentiate that in obstructive lung disease work of breathing is increased due to more expenditure of energy to overcome increased airway resistance matlab yahan pe obstruction ke wajah se aapko zyada energy use karni pad rahi hai taki aap aapka body ka jo requirement hai usko fulfill kar sako but in restrictive lung disease what happens is the work of breathing is also increased as greater inspiratory effort is required to mark डिग्री डिक्रीज इन लंग कॉम्प्लाइंस उसे भी वो रिकवर करने के लिए उसको इंक्रीज वर्क ऑफ ब्रीदिंग हो रहा है पेशेंट विद ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव डिजॉर्डर इकोनोमाइज देयर वेंटिलेशन बाय टेकिंग स्लो एंड डीप ब्रीथ तो पेशेंट क्या करता है डीप ब्रीथ लेता है और धीरे धीरे सांस लेता है रिस्ट्रिक्टिव में क्या हो जाता है पेशेंट विद रिस्ट्रिक्टिव डिजॉर्डर इकोनोमाइज देयर वेंटिलेशन बाय टेकिंग रैपिड बट शैलो रेस्परेशन फटाफट सांस लेता है पर जो सांस ले रहा है वो डीप नहीं कर रहा वो शैलो ब्रीदिंग कर रहा है सो दिस वॉज द अप्लाइड फिजियोलॉजी फॉर द लंग वॉल्यूम एंड कैपेसिटीज वेर वी सॉ ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव एंड रिस्ट्रिक्टिव डिजीजेस सो थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो आई होप यू लाइक दिस एंड योर कंसेप्ट हैज बीन क्लियर रिगार्डिंग द लंग वॉल्यूम्स एंड कैपेसिटीज प्लीज शेयर दिस वीडियो इफ यू फाइंड इट वेरी यूजफुल थैंक यू